Hello viewers, I am here to talk about another very interesting study that was published uh, for the December uh, series of uh, Annals of Internal Medicine for this month. This was actually published uh, uh, you know, on December 13th, which was actually yesterday, December 13, 2022, so it is the latest from Annals of Internal Medicine. So, what is this study? The study is uh, designed to see uh, uh, calorie restricted versus calorie unrestricted uh, nutritional interventions for treating uh, diabetes and also a second marker that they measured which is fatty liver. So, the title of this study is effect of calorie unrestricted low carbohydrate high fat diet versus high carbohydrate low fat diet on type 2 diabetes and non alcoholic fatty liver disease which is uh, happening because of high insulin from diabetes or insulin resistance not from alcohol. So, what does it mean is basically unrestricted low carbohydrate and high fat means usually the treatment that right now what is the standard treatment all over across the globe and in the standard treatments that have been advised for type 2 diabetes is they are restricting the calories and they say that you still have to do 55 to 60 percent of carbohydrate diet which is what is the high fat high carbohydrate diet that is recommended and when people do that when that is recommended people simply get hungry very often uh, because of the highs and lows of the sugars and and they make too much insulin and they keep getting hungry. So, it is very difficult for people to follow when they have diabetes a regimen where when they give so many carbohydrates high carbohydrates to uh, restrict the carbohydrates that makes them uh, hungry and they cannot do this. So, this is where we have failed to some extent without individualizing the treatments about the needs and on top of it we also add a lot of medications while giving so much carbohydrates to decrease that glucose. So, they have this ups and downs of glucose and they become weak and tired and you still are introducing very high carbohydrate diets and saying that because carbohydrate gives only 4 calories because when you talk just about calories a carbohydrate gives 4 calories of energy and then 4 kilocalories of energy and then uh, protein gives the same 4 kilocalories of energy and then the fat gives 9 kilocalories. So, what there what has been assumed and presumed so far is since fat gives more kilocalories for the same gram they are saying that you know you should do less of that because when you go by the calorie method. So, when you restrict and give a lower calorie decrease the calorie total overall calorie, but not talk about the quality of foods and then only talk about how much calories that carbohydrate gives and just so extrapolate it and then decrease the total number of calories in fat and also talk somewhere in between protein. We have been doing this. So, the, dis the study was designed to see if the other side of the group got unrestricted amount of calories without looking at anything with the fat since they have more fat in the other group. Then what happened because they found that this, uh, this study actually let me explain what happened when this study was done. This is a randomized control study and this is a study from uh, Denmark. This was done in uh, Odens University Hospital in Denmark from November 16th until, 20, uh, until June 2020. There were 165 participants with this study and um, what they did was when they said low carbohydrate high fat diet what it means is they have put 50 to 60 percent of energy coming from low carbohydrate high fat diet has 50 to 60 percent of energy coming from fat and they have 20 percent of energy coming from carbohydrates and they have 30 percent of energy coming from protein. 
that adds up to 100 percent. Now, the other arm let us put the other arm on this side the other arm which is high carbohydrate low fat which is the standard diet that have been given to diabetics and everyone to lose weight this this diet what does it have it has 50 percent energy from carbohydrates from carbohydrates and it has 20 to 30 percent from fats 20 to 30 percent from fats remember we had 50 percent to 60 percent from fats here on the higher fat diet that we gave and then the protein is 20 to 25 percent here. So, the protein did not change much it is pretty much is a 20 percent uh, 30 percent here slightly high in the high fat group and then it is a little bit less, but otherwise mostly the difference is in the higher fat here and higher carb here. Now, when we say fat and carbs we generally do not talk about what type of fats and carbs because we have made a generalized rule to use those words because it means a lot because there are a lot of carbs that do not uh, that are very favorable to us like vegetables that are above the ground, but there are a lot of starchy vegetables or processed carbs like bread, butter, pasta you know bread sorry bread, pasta, rice, corn, wheat those are the high grain foods which are processed uh, in, instead of just leaving it alone like with the fiber. So, those are the carbs that are more uh, not very helpful for insulin resistance and diabetes. So, they have not gone into those details all that they said was the quantity, but if you see the natural fat similarly we have been created a fear for fat when fat comes naturally with the proteins like eggs, cheese, meats, fish there are a lot of fats in the nuts which come with proteins these are all good fats and naturally when nature designed it in such a way that those fats are very helpful for us. So, we really do not know in the percentages what exactly is the type of foods, but when you see the results on this like high fat with low carb and then low uh, high carb with low fat the results what they found was uh, they found that there was uh, significant improvement with the uh, in the glycemic control which is the sugar control that is what they checked the markers. They also checked the lipid levels uh, after 6 months and uh, they showed that uh, triglycerides really came down and HDL the good cholesterol went up with this intervention significantly. Uh, however, there are some changes according to the type of people and genetics uh, some people the LDL which is the bad cholesterol they call as went down uh, sorry went down and in some people it went up this is all I am talking about in the low carb high fat group. So, overall the benefit in the high carb low fat group was seen a little bit in the LDL group, but in general the sugars have gotten significantly better. They also checked the fatty liver that the changes because of when you make too much insulin and insulin resistance. They did not see much change in the fatty liver in terms of a scale that they called two point scale for non alcoholic fatty liver disease, but they saw a good difference in the one point scale. They saw a better uh, difference in with the high fat diet in the one point scale compared to uh, low fat diet. So, in general the, the diabetes has gotten better significantly the fatty liver disease there were some equivocal results at least in the one point uh, scale it was better. So, in the results showed that a low carbohydrate high fat diet was superior in improving glycemic control uh, 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 and also these patients have lost more weight. So, this might be suddenly like you know this is something that might be uh, looking strange for you. In our practice we have been doing a lower carbohydrate di diet with improving a little bit and increasing the fat a little bit and adding moderate protein to it and had very good success with our patients because we see that patients respond very well especially for this works very well for people who are insulin resistant. What it means is when they are carbohydrate intolerant carbohydrate intolerant that is what leads to diabetes. You definitely do not want to give higher carbohydrate foods 
you want to slowly replace it and shift and see that their good fats are added to it and increase a little bit of protein and cut down on the carbs to 20 percent of their energy and use the right kind of carbs which have a lot of fiber which do not cause insulin resistance and in that case in our practice for the last few years we have been had tremendous success we have had a lot of people decrease their medications and we had more people who went off medications who got put on medications at other practices and just by doing this simple phenomena their triglycerides came down their hdl went up and their diabetes has improved significantly at least by 2 to 2.5 percent in a1c in quite a few number of people depending on the severity um, and so these are the changes and then they lose weight and waste and they feel very energetic so the fear of fat um, and uh, uh, having excess consumption of grains has led to what is called as in the last 30 40 years when we have been told not to eat fat fat is bad and then to eat more grains to replace that because you get hungry to replace that has had only more uh, cardiometabolic disease and obesity growing up because we have not understood really what is the mechanism how the hormones work and what is the f difference between the fat that we eat from outside when it comes in a proper way combined with the protein that nature already makes versus the fat that you make in excess from carbohydrates so i'll give you a brief outline of this to, uh, for you to understand what i'm saying and i can talk more about this when i talk about nuts and bolts of nutrition series that i'm starting next like metabolism made easy so for instance if you take the insulin production this is insulin and if you if this is time you can explain this higher fat and lower uh, carbohydrate thing how it works to improve the triglycerides as well as uh, um, decrease the a1c and improve the hdl so a carbohydrate which is refined like if i give you a simple sugar you know uh, this is 0 hour, this is 1 hour and this is 2 hours. So, if I give a, a sh sugary drink which is like 100 percent, this will go and peak in 1 hour like that and then in 2 hours it will come down like that. But then not only it will come down, it will go down to make you more hungry, your sugar will go down and, the, and then the body makes more glucose and then you get hungry again. Now, this is for a pure sugar, 100 percent. Now, if I give something like a refined sugar, like all the pizza, breads, rice, starches, potatoes and all, your sugar will almost go up to 80 percent or 70 percent of this, uh, 70 to 80 percent of the 100 percent of sugar what you are seeing. So, this is the peak and this is the insulin. So, if this is the sugar that goes up like that, and the insulin is tracking back going up and coming down and so this is how it works for a sugar this is for the carbs that they are talking 70 to 80 percent and there are some carbs that actually are like with fiber and all the vegetables green leafy vegetables they don't cause this kind of a spike they will cause a spike somewhere like that like that so that's actually that not even that much like that now, if I do a protein, however, the insulin spike will be peaking up in not in one hour like this, this is one hour, it will peak up in two hours, but almost one third or half, but the insulin will continue a little bit longer time, let us say this is three hours. So, the, the spike of insulin for a protein here is much less, whereas if I give a fat, you produce the insulin very little but it stays longer in the blood for many many hours like that but not much so obviously when somebody has a problem with insulin resistance like diabetes you want to make less insulin to make it more sensitive so you want to make insulin somewhere here with types of foods with carbohydrates which have lot of fibers fiber and also protein and fat mixture without taking it out and decreasing the stimulation with refined starches and sugars so that you make less insulin and make insulin somewhere here and still get the benefits and not feel hungry because 
when you do the higher fat and higher protein not high higher than what you're doing and cut down on the refined starches and carbs your hunger will not come back that often you'll stay less hungry for many many hours 8 to 10 hours and you'll spontaneously eat less and your metabolic profile will get better uh, so this is the base of the study i hope this should at least be tried instead of giving more and more medications uh, and um, since this study was superior in improving glycemic control and other markers like triglycerides and also losing weight nutritional intervention as a first intervention should be tried first and when you do this always if you are on medications we should stop the medications or taper off and it should be done uh, closely monitored with uh, physician supervision but uh, this study which is done from Denmark is, uh, is uh, they are going to get more results on this and more long term studies uh, you can we will put a link for this for you to follow this and the annals of internal medicine uh, this study that came up on December 13th so we are um, just discussing this for you to understand that nutritional intervention can be very powerful if you do this and this should be individualized and should be practiced and tried by you then taking more medications uh, so that's our uh, uh, reason why we are talking and I'll hope to see you very soon for more information on uh, these kind of details thank you very much